Hello everybody, John Bornchain here, and this is Cable Lane. I want to thank you for tuning in again. Today is part two of our discussion that we began last week on the 10 biblical warnings you need to stop ignoring. I know that sounds really stern. It is a convicting message. Last week we talked about five of them. Today we'll finish up with the last five, but let me recap for you the first five that we covered. Number one, never be lazy. Number two, avoid sexual temptation. Number three, repent of your sins. Number four, stop unkind speech. And that's not just the bad words that come out of our mouths, but all the words that tear people down and even the gossip as we talk about others behind their back. Number five, we are to run from youthful lusts. Don't even entertain it. So number six, let's pick up here today. Number six, renounce ungodliness. Now, what does that mean? Well, sounds cut and dry, but really we are to live a life that is marked by repentance. It's not a one-time occurrence. When we came to Jesus Christ to, for salvation, there's an act of repentance that comes into this, where we acknowledge that we are sinners that are now saved by grace as we come under the allegiance of Jesus Christ. In that, there's an act of repentance. Sometimes that's the one and only time we've repented. We need to be known as the early church as repenters, people that understand that we have broken the heart of God. Yes, even as Christians, we can still break the heart of God because we know better and we are to walk a better path. And sometimes we find ourselves going back, drifting back into the abyss of sin. And we're told that we are no longer debtors to the flesh according to Romans chapter 8 verses 12 to 17. In fact, we read in Titus chapter 2, 12 to 13, that we are to deny ungodliness, that we are to live a righteous life. And all of this means that we renounce ungodliness. You are no longer children of darkness, but children of light, and we need to walk as such. Number seven, quit stealing. <laughs> I sound like a parent, don't I? Talking to my child, quit stealing. Well, it's the reality of the matter here because we need to address this. We find that we are still stealing, but we've justified it. And let me give you an example. Maybe you're using software that you haven't purchased a license for. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm gonna hit a nerve here. Maybe we've downloaded music that we didn't pay for. Uh, perhaps you're not even working with your utmost potential. When you're not working the hours you know you should be working, when you have denied your employer the fullness of your abilities, yes, even that's stealing. You see, it's all around us. We just don't think of it the same way. Maybe you're not thinking of going into a convenience store and walking out with items that don't belong to you. What we actually can find ourselves doing is justifying taking the stapler home or those extra pens and pencils, maybe even cheating on our taxes a little bit. We have to find that as ambassadors for Christ, we have to self-examine, find that there's any iniquity in us, ask the Lord to purge even these little sins from our life. I mean, it's a, it's a matter of really just confronting who we say we are in Christ Jesus. If we're an ambassador for Christ, you don't want an ambassador for this country going into another country and stealing and talking poorly and, and being given into immorality. Rather, you want them to be the best of the best to represent us the best that they can. And likewise, as Christians, we are representing Jesus Christ our Lord. So we got to stop stealing. Yes, even in the little things. Number eight, we have to resist the devil. You see, we're told in 1 Peter 5, 8 that he is a roaring lion seeking to devour. And James 4, 7 instructs us to resist him and he will flee. And what does that mean? Well, the thing is, is when we start to give chinks in our armor and act like the world again and embracing the things of the world, indulging in the entertainment of it and the things of it, consumed with the pursuits of the things of this world, we're actually giving in to the very temptations of the devil. When we stop reading the word, stop praying like we're supposed to, we're actually declaring allegiance back in the ways of the world. We're no longer acting as an ambassador for Christ. So we need to resist the devil 
devil and he's very clever. He loves to put all the temptations around us. He can't force you to do anything, but he can certainly put out all the devices of temptation, those vices that can quickly pull you away from your allegiance to Jesus Christ. We are to resist him flee from him. When he comes at us with temptations, when he comes at us with with ways that try to uh, lure us from even our marriages and and how we serve faithfully and how we parent, when there's temptation perhaps to go hang out with the buddies rather than being the parent that we should be or the spouse that we should be, we have to understand how he works. Recognize it. Flee from the temptations of the enemy and from himself. So that's an important one. Number nine, Fear the Lord. I think, wow, that one sounds really strict. Well, it's not the fear and trembling that we might come to know when we're scared to death of something. Rather, when we fear God, what we're doing is acknowledging His supreme authority over all things. He has breathed into existence the entire universe, every detail of it. He holds it all in his hand. He talks about in Job how he placed the Pleiades in the sky, in the, in the universe with his very hand. And you're talking about a constellation of stars that's over 40 light years across. So you're traveling at 186,000 miles per second for 40 straight years. And he says he placed that there with his hand. So there's this reverential awe of who he is, a holy fear of him, that this is a God who could just take away your ability to breathe, just like that. You see, every cell is ordered by him. In him we move and breathe and have our being. He holds all things together. He made everything. Every cell is aligned because he wills it to be. And so there's an awesomeness about him that we dare not take lightly. You see in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, we're told to fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's all. Now I'll tell you, as a child growing up, I had a a deep love for my mother. I mean, she was amazing, still is to this day. But I also had a healthy respect for my mother. You see, if mom wasn't happy about something, if I didn't do my chores, do my piano lessons, or whatever it was that she instructed me to do, if I didn't do it, there were consequences. So there was a respect, and i.e. there was a fear, if you will, of the consequences of disobedience. We need to have that same healthy fear when it comes to God. Number 10, humble yourself before God. Philippians 2, 3 instructs us to do nothing that is motivated by selfishness. You see, we are to live lives that are humble before God. Understanding our total self-worth before Him is because of Him and Him alone. Anything of value in us is because He's sealed us, He's marked us, He's called us His own. We're a child of God. It's not about your accomplishments in this world or your social status at all or how many possessions you've amassed to yourself. Your whole identity as a child of God is because of God who works in and through you as a conduit of His working. So we dare not heap upon ourselves praise or think ourselves to be haughty and proud that somehow we've achieved any anything in and through Christ Jesus. Rather, it's Him and Him alone who receives all praise and glory. We are unworthy of anything that He has given to us, certainly unworthy of heaven, but rather we are the receiver of a treasure that has no price to it. It is priceless. It is unbelievable in scope and its spectrum of majesty. And so we are the recipients of this. We're inheritors of the kingdom of God. And so we dare not come into his presence with pride or arrogance or anything that would elevate self over God. We are to walk in humility, contrite spirit, acknowledging that he and he alone receives all glory and praise. So that's the top 10 for you. The top 10 warnings that we are not to take lightly or ignore in any way. Let me recap them for you one more time. Here they are. Number one, never be lazy. Number two, avoid sexual temptation. Number three, repent of your sins. Number four, stop unkind speech. Number five, run from youthful lusts. Number six, renounce ungodliness. Number seven, quit stealing. (laughs) Number eight, resist the devil. Number nine, fear the Lord. 
And number 10, humble yourself before God. I certainly hope that this has been an encouragement to you, probably more convicting if anything, something you need to continue to study and meditate on as you go to God's word in prayer. And may we all be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ through this sanctification process. God bless you, my friends. Take care.